this video is realistically a quick crash course into how to build a Node.js API. We're going to run through how to set up an environment, write the basic server, CRUD operations, testing the API with Postman, adding basic error handling, connecting to a database, we'll be using MongoDB. We'll also be creating a user model where the user can log in and register with your system. We'll be securing endpoints so users can access particular endpoints once they are logged in. Then we're also going to look at additional considerations, for example, cause and rate limiting. So the first thing we're going to work on is setting up the environment. Now we need to ensure that we have Node.js installed on our system. To do this, we can go to nodejs.org and download the LTS version or the current version. I'll be working close with the LTS version, maybe a version behind slightly, just a minor one. To check that Node.js is installed in your system, we can open up a new terminal window. And we can type in node-v. And that should bring us up with the node version and also npm-v will give us our latest npm version as well. Once we've confirmed that Node.js is installed, we now need to install a few packages. To do this, we open up the terminal, we type inside the terminal npmi for npm install, we install express, body parser, that should be all we need for now. If we open up the newly created package.json file, we can see that we have a body parser and express installed. So inside the root, let's create a new file called index.js. And this is where our core server is going to be. Later on in the lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to break each root away from the main file to give our API a bit of structure to make it more future proof. But for now, we're just going to have everything inside the index.js file. So we're going to say const express is equal to require express, and that's to import express in. We're going to say const body parser is equal to require body parser. And then we need to initialize express to do this. We say const app is equal to express. And we can say app.use body parser.json, and this will make sure that the content that we pass back is in a JSON format. So for testing here, we're going to create a simple endpoint. So app.get, and that's going to be the root. And that's going to take a request and a response as a parameter. And we're just going to return hello world. Once we've done that, we can say app.listen. I'm going to listen on port 3000. And we're just going to console log that the example app is listening on port 3000. Now to run this, we go to our terminal and we type node and then dot. And that will look for the index.js file. If you've named it something else, it would say node and then the name of your file. So I currently have another API up and running for another project I'm working on. So I'm just going to clear that and rerun this. And then we go, we can see that it's running on port 3000. We open up a browser. We go to localhost 3000. We can see it says, hello world. So that is the most basic API server that we can create. Up next would be the CRUD operations. So let's say, for example, we create a small database. So this will just be a user's database, for example. So this is our list of users. Now, this is not how we do it in the real world, but this is our list of users at the moment. So let's say app.get. Let's change that to app.get users. And let's send back the users we have. So if I now click save on that, and we go back into our browser, and we say localhost 3000, and then slash users. We need to restart the API. We can see we get returned our users. So how do we add a user to that list? So let's say app.post. I'm going to post that to users. And this is going to take a request and a response as before. And then inside of here, we can say const user equals request.body users.push user. So we're going to push that user into that new users array. And we're going to send successfully created the user. And what we can do in there as well is actually send back the user and the users. Let's just wrap that inside of an object. Let me just call this message. 
Click save. And when we send a post request to this users now, it will return us with a success message, the user that's been created and the list of users. So to test this, let's open Postman. If you haven't got Postman installed, you can go to postman.com and we can sign up and download. It's free to use. So with Postman open, it looks a bit daunting. Let's click this plus button here. This will create a new request for us. I'm going to change it to a post request and it's going to go to HTTP colon backslash backslash localhost colon 3000 slash users. And inside the body tag here, we want to change it to raw and then type will be of JSON. I need to give it an ID of two, the name of John and an email of John at James.com. If we hit send, to restart my API again. Don't forget to restart your API after changing this. Let's click send again. I've misspelled local post. Bad. And here we go. We can see successfully created user. User, that's the one that we created. And then we have our list of users here. Now notice we had to inject the ID into here. That's not the best way of doing it. When we plug into the database, the ID won't be an issue because it's auto-generated, but this is just an example. So we've got the users, we've created the users. Now let's get a single user. So we can say, so app.get, then users slash colon ID. And this will be an ID parameter. That once again takes a request and a response. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to say constant ID and we're going to make sure that's an integer. And then we're going to say users.find. We're going to find that user has got the ID that's equal to this ID. We're going to send that user back. Whilst we're doing this, we're going to create another endpoint to delete a user. So app.delete. And that's going to also take in the user with the ID parameter. Same as before with the ID. And then I'm just going to say users.filter. I'm going to filter everything that hasn't got this ID. That should give us a fresh new list of users who doesn't match that ID. And then we're going to send that back. So the only one that we haven't got now is the U for CRUD, which is update. Now to do that, we say app.put. We have the users once again with the ID, because we're referencing a particular user. And once again, we're going to get the user's ID. I'm going to find the user inside of the database that we have. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the updated information from the request.body. I'm going to map that to the user. So if the user ID is equal to the ID, we're going to map that new user to that ID. Otherwise, we're going to leave the user the same. That's all of the CRUD endpoints. We can test all of those inside of Postman. So let's first of all save and restart our API. And then inside of here, let's create this second user again. So here we go, users, we have our two users. And to update, let's say put, let's update the first one. So Alice, I'm going to name Alice to Sarah. And Sarah's going to have a new email address called sarah at james.com. Click send. So I get this error saying cannot put to users. That's because I forgot to put the ID in the URL. So let's click send again. And we can see here that we have number one and updated to Sarah. And two is now John. So let's now delete John. So put delete. You don't need a body content for delete. I will leave it there for now. Let's put number two inside the URL, click send. We can see that we're back to just having Sarah in the database. So at the moment we've covered setting up the environment, writing the basic server, implementing CRUD operations, and also testing the API.
So up next, we're going to have the adding basic error handling. So before we go any further, I just want to say we're going to install Nodemon, so Nodemon, which allows us to check that the files over here have changed. If they've changed, it's going to automatically restart the server for us. So to do that, you run npm install Nodemon, and that will allow us to automatically refresh this on save. So to run that, we say Nodemon. And here we go, we can see that it's listening on port 3000. If I make a change in here, click save, it restarts the server for us. Right now for adding basic error handling, I'm gonna create a bit of middleware. I'm gonna create this at the top. This middleware will take in a few parameters and then return a res of 500. So a status back to the user of 500 and an error message to say that there has been an error. So to do this, we say app.use. And that's going to take in a few parameters. It's going to take in an error, a request, a response, and next. So inside of here, for our benefit, we're going to console.error and the error.stack. And then what we want to do is send a status and a message back to the user. So we're going to say res.status is equal to 500. And we're going to send a message. That message will be something went wrong. Now, to use this middleware, we're going to use the try catch. So, for every single one of our endpoints here, what we want to do is say try. And we're going to put in our code inside of the try. And if that doesn't work, we want to catch the error. We're going to pass that to the next. So, that's going to use this. That's going to pass the error in and then return the status to user. So let's do that for all of the endpoints. So this will create a pretty solid API for you, which will give you errors. And the API then just won't fall over. Okay, so that should work well for implementing error handling, and that's just the basic error handling we can do at the moment. We also need to pass this next parameter into all of the endpoints, so it will be request, res, and next. So we haven't actually got any code that will error at the moment, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to paste in a bit of code, which will trigger an error for us. So this is an app.get slash trigger error, and that will actually throw a new error and pass that error back to us. And we'll be able to see that the API won't fall over from this. So if we go back to our browser, go to slash trigger error, we can see that we get the error listed here. This is a custom error, and this is the console log that we had for the stack. But the actual API hasn't fallen over. So we can still access the users without any issues. Video. In the next video, we'll be looking at connecting to a database, creating the user model and the user registration endpoints, securing the endpoints with JWT and also additional considerations. If you found this video useful, hit the like and subscribe button. And for my channel members, all of the code for this as a Git repo will be available in the members section. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.